Thanks so much. I had so much fun. Well, we need to do it again. Okay. Are you just saying that? Yeah. Hey, this is Michelle Spivey, your Practical Priestess of Wisdom, and I want to welcome you to today's podcast of Wisdom Smack. So join me on the flip as we get into how to make your life fun again. I'll see you then. Have you fallen into a rut where things are just the same old, same old? Or have you gotten to the point where it takes too much effort to put on pants to go out when you don't have to? If you've answered yes to one or both of these questions, this podcast is for you and for me. Now, when I'm looking at my my world, my life, and the people in it, I really try to uh, take life as it comes and and be lighthearted. But every now and again, I trip up on something and I have to be honest. And my honesty has led me to this. And that is, it is so easy to become dull and boring. And so because of that, I was like, hmm, I need to mix things up and uh, do some things. And wouldn't you know it, I'm out doing more things, seeing more, you know, folks and all of this kind of stuff. And um, a family member actually reached out and they were like, you know what? My life sucks. I'm doing the same old routines. And I was like, well, do I have the way for you? And so we got to talking about it. And 20 minutes in, they were like, you know what? You probably should make this a podcast. I was like, really? And they were like, yeah. And so um, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about some quick little things of how to make your life you know, fun again. Okay. So let me go on and just, let's, let's just talk. Okay. And, uh, what I want to say is first and foremost, reality is a weird thing. Um, (laughs) reality is, I think something that we make. And so if your reality is all about high obligation responsibility and uh it has t- it has no looseness for you to go off of a beaten path is you're you know like they said um uh, used to say you know highly strong tight as a a, a piano string or whatever then your reality could take uh some some uh therapy and rehabilitation. Okay. So what I want to just say is this, and this is usually across the board and where I got this, I got this from studying consumer behaviorism. And that is this, that people really don't want the reality of obligation and adulthood. No, you know what they want? They want simplicity and magic. Yeah. People in their realities want simplicity and magic. And when we talk about simplicity, we're talking about making something so clear that you have no doubt in your mind what you're going to do and how you're going to get it done. And then when we talk about magic, we're talking about that element of capriciousness where anything could happen and it's okay. And you go with the flow. And so when we are talking about making your life fun again, I'm wanting to just put this up front that the best thing you can do is when it comes to your reality and what you think you have to do and what you think you have to be to to live, I want you to simplify that down to the least common denominator where you know without a shadow of a doubt, this is who I am. This is what I do. This is uh, how I want to live my life. And then open it up to the um, fairy tale of of magic that anything can happen. I have a podcast I've I've been working on and it's simple. It's it's talking about being off the the beaten trail, you know, off the beaten path. And going off the beaten path is one of the ways that you can allow magic to come into your life. You know, it might not sound dangerous until you do it, but have you ever taken another route through a residential area and you did not turn on the navigation in your phone and you went back to trusting yourself to figure out how to find your way uh, to 
a place of familiarity when you've gone through places that you've never seen before. I do that a lot, and I've had to remind myself to do that again in my quest to make life fun again. And I'm going to tell you something about it. When you start doing things like that, mixing it up and giving your mind new ideas, images, and instances to deal with, your reality changes and morphs. I I will even say, I used to laugh when um, my grandparents <laughs> would say, we're going to take a drive. And I'm like, please, you guys, don't be those old people that take Sunday drives. But now I can really appreciate the wisdom in what they were doing. And I have now started to do it, that you can really just take a drive and have a destination to nowhere except to get back home before you know it gets too late. And you'll be amazed. I'm I'm talking about amazed at what will happen when you trust yourself. Because to be honest with you, when you start making your reality as simple as possible and allowing a bit of magic to seep in here and there, you're going to find out that you rebuild a bridge of self-trust and self-confidence that will come that you didn't even know was depleted or even missing. Have you ever had that that knowing about yourself that today is going to be a great day and I ha- hold the reins of uh, the horses that drive my life and I can go out and do this? Well, if you can't say that or you don't know the last time you said that, It's time for you to get simple, add some magic, and start to do things that make you reestablish or even build the muscle of self-trust. So now that I've talked about that, thank you. I want to get into uh, five quick little things that you can do to start making your life fun again. And when I'm talking about this, a lot of it does not have to necessarily do with things you do as much as it does with how you look and perceive and interact with your life. So the first one I want to talk about is, so I want to talk about this phenomenon called reframing. And reframing is so powerful because reframing uh, encourages us to strip away everything we thought we knew to look at something differently. But I'm going to go a little further here. I'm going to actually go from if you were to reframe a picture or something. The thing is, is you have to, when you reframe something, you have to take the essence of what it is of value out and change it into something new, fit it into a new housing. And to reframe on that level is quite scary. And let me give you an example. So if we're talking about, say, for instance, you just want to reframe how you uh, interact with your quote unquote friends. And um, I'm, I'm using this one because I experienced this and I have had it experienced that as we move into different stages of life, we will naturally prune and gain friends. And then for some people, there may come a time when you look around And the only quote-unquote friends you have are those who are are relying on you for food and shelter, a.k.a. your kids, or those who have to be there with you because it's uh, legally binding, a.k.a. your wife or or your husband or whatever. And you're you're like, huh? You can even do this. So I want to bring that up because it doesn't matter. If even if you can't quote unquote get get rid of the kids and and thank goodness the spouse is not going anywhere or the significant other or whatever, you can still do a reframe. And so to do the reframe, take what it is that you find of value in your reality in your life at that time. If you find that having a personal time to explore who you are and to stay connected with who you are is a value. I want you to reframe it. So it may have been where you said to your family and your friends, look, I just need to get away. I just need time for myself. And your friends, your family or whomever is like, okay. And they just say, oh, you're being weird at that time. That's fine. But that's the old frame that you used to live in. And so with the reframing, 
instead of saying, you know, I need this time for myself, do the reframing where you try to investigate who it is inside of you who is calling you to have this time away from the people you know. And just by doing a simple reframe as that, what you're doing is you're changing the housing and the focus. So instead of you telling people, I need this and, you know, just just give me my space, you go and, you know, of course they know that you, you need to get away or whatever. If that's, you know, if that's how you roll. But instead of you, you know, telling them that, you know, tell them, I want to go and just do some things today and, and see what happens so that when I get back, I'll have something fun or in, insightful about myself that I can tell you. And by doing that simple example of a reframe, you are going to excel and grow and you're going to become fun to be around again. Now that's just one type of reframe. Yes, you can do the others. And um, another way to do a reframe is not only changing the value and um, how it's presented, but changing the meaning, changing uh, the the surface of, of what, it, what it means. You know, so there are different perspectives that you can look at something at any given time. Just ask eyewitnesses who watch something. Each person has a different viewpoint, a different opinion, and they saw something different. And as myriad as those things are, you can do the same thing when you're trying to reframe your life. So what about if you are fatigued in your relationships, fatigued in your routines, you know, fatigued in the rules that you live under? Try to reframe them by giving them different viewpoints, different values, different definitions. You know, instead of something as simple as I have to do X, Y, Z, change to I get to do X, Y, Z. By that simple reframe, you're going to differentiate the energy around it and you're going to infuse it with a a breath of fresh air and hopefully new life. So there's that. So, okay, that's reframing. The next one I want to talk about is positioning. And you're like, positioning? Yes. When you want to, you know, make your, your life fun again, you've got to be willing to position yourself to be able to explore new things. I took this uh, online class a while ago on storytelling. And the, perf- the instructor in the storytelling online class, encouraged us that for the next, I think it was a month, we had to go out specifically to new places where we could not have the same authority, position, title, or familiarity that we had in our everyday life. And what she wanted us to do is she wanted us to gain new stories to be able to have material for when we would tell our stories. And so I, I did, I, I actually, I just drove up to the Georgia mountains one weekend. I love the mountains and I found a nice little cottage. Unfortunately, the cottage, um, it had some dust mites or something. So I had a miserable time, but I had a great time in that I got a chance to, to see Ruby Falls and I, I did some fun things. It was just me. And I, uh, found this quaint little restaurant. I don't know if it's still there, but it was, it was different. And I would have never done that on my own if I hadn't been instructed and taught how to position myself in a unfamiliar setting to be able to gain new stories. So I want to ask you this. When's the last time you were out of uh, uh, out of your normal uh, comfort zone? When was the last time you were able to do something that gave you a great story to relate? When is the last time you changed it up enough to make you a little bit uncomfortable where everybody doesn't know your name or where you don't know the roads, the paths, you don't know the people at the local places? 
When's the last time you and, you know, maybe you're, you're you a friend, a spouse or a group of friends. When's the last time you ventured out going back to that off the beaten path kind of thing? When's the last time you did that? If you can't think of a recent new and exciting story that has happened to you, I'm going to venture to say that this is probably one of the ones you definitely need to stay stick with. Because when you want to make your life fun again, your life is based, uh, your the fun of your life a lot of times is directly tied to the experiences you have. And it's hard to get new experiences when you are in a rut, when you know what you're going to be doing on five weekends from now which is usually the same thing you did in the previous five weekends. If that's all you do, including going to the same set of restaurants, going in the same neighborhood, going to see the same events uh, at your local arena, that's not what we're talking about. Um, in uh, the area where I live in, United, in the United States, you can quickly get to this scenic highway that will take you through to watch a lot of different foliage. Um, we're coming up on that time now as I'm recording, and there is this, this train that uh, is an 11 mile track that you can go through to watch the the tree foliage change and things. And I'm actually trying to get a ticket to go because I wanted to go last year and I I wasn't able to, but I want to go this year because guess what? I'm trying to make my life fun. I'm trying to make sure I develop good experiences and good stories that I will have because that's part of what we do. Okay, so the next one is renaming. This one... I didn't think it was that important until I started doing it. And actually, when I talked to my family member and told them about it, they were like, that's cool. I'm going to use it. Okay, so renaming. This is one of the easiest ways to make something new and unique again to you. So rename traditions. Rename what you do. Rename uh, how uh, you perceive things. It's really something when you're used to calling something one thing and you start calling it something else. It infuses a, a new life into it. You resuscitate uh, your your world and you break up the staleness of dying tradition. See, that's the thing. One of the things that I have had to really just be honest with myself and with others In this whole thing that we do in life, whether you have a large family, a large fan base, a large friend base, or whether you are a loner and it's just you and your your pet or just even you, you have the ability to be able to uh, change your life on a dime. And I know a lot of people are like, no, not really. Yes, really, you can. And you can do it by something as simple as renaming. Um, (laughs) don't laugh at me, but I named my cars. Now I I'm going to tell you, I did not rename my car. I did not because that's the name I gave her is the name she has. Okay. And yes, my car this time is a she, but (laughs) what I did do to mix things up a bit is I renamed, um, the path that I drive, the out of the way path I drive when I go to walk. And so just by doing that, you know, I didn't name it anything crazy, but you know, say for instance, you never name the path that you drive to get somewhere. And then today you do. And it becomes, okay, this is the quote unquote candy lane path or whatever. And then next month you name it something else. Just by doing that one little thing, it's going to breathe new life into that path. And I'm going to tell you, now this is the funny part. When and if you share the name and the renaming with others, it, it expl- expands it. I <laughs> I was talking to a friend uh, recently and I was going to go this, that other way, like I said, the, the, the back way. Um, to get to the the track, the the walking trail that I like to go to. And they started laughing. They were like, Michelle, you are always coming up with fun 
ways to look at life. And I was like, thank you. I'm doing my job. And that is what I've been going for. How to keep my life fun, how to keep it simple and keep the magic there and how to trust myself, you know. And so, so far we've talked about reframing, positioning and reframe, I mean, renaming. Now, I want to talk to you about this one that is not something that you're going to do all the time, but you may, uh, may need to from time to time. And that is to have urgency. You know, there is a lot of stuff that we don't realize that we we deny ourselves of doing. We push off. We say, one day I'm going to get to it. And I'm going to tell you, one of the quickest ways you can find uh, to root out things that probably you need to give urgency to are things that you find yourself saying, you know, I have to do X, Y, and Z. So when you have things that you quote unquote have to do or need to do or should do, those are the things that I want you to then turn into a sense of urgency and give them a reason for why now. Um, most people like they have this list of honeydews. They have this list of um, things that they need to get done that should be done. Take one of them at a time. You could just say, I'll do one a month, you know, start that way and whittle them down and give yourself a sense of urgency because what's going to happen is when you start whittling down and doing them, you'll look around and you'll be like, wow, things are starting to change around here. I'm starting to mix up the energy in my life. And going back to what we said before, when you look at your reality, you really do want to have simplicity and magic. And when you do this kind of stuff of, uh, putting urgency on things that you need to, should, should do, and have to do, it brings a new element of uh, liveliness to, to your life. I'll tell you, I have been putting off now, don't, 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 uh, don't judge me, but I had been putting off <laughs> pressure washing my house. Now, of course, I'm not going to do it. I, that's just not going to work. But I finally was like, because I kept, you know, I drive at home. I'm like, I have to do this. I have to do this. And I was like, enough is enough. And so I called my lawn guy. We we scheduled the appointment and he came over and he, you know, did the, the work and he found, oh gosh, he found a, a wasp nest, um, on, you know, one of the corners of my awnings or whatever. Um, and we had to get that down and then, you know, just some other stuff. But just by him pressure washing the, the house. Now it has a new vibrancy to it. It has a new energy to it. And I was like, just by me simply stop, you know, stopping the I have to, I need to, I should do, and just doing it brought all of that in. All right. And so the next one is we've talked about it before, but simplicity. I want you to smarten things down. And when I say smarten things down, I want you to start employing priority. And I want you to start using uh, new ways to synthesize and put together new things that you can do in your free time or on your way to work or whatever. Start to look for ways that help you to make your life have a simplicity that's exciting. So that's what I call smartening things down, okay? So that one I think is pretty self-explanatory. If you don't get it or whatever, you know, send me a note, check the show notes and there's a way to send me a message or whatever. Okay, so as we're, we're closing this out, I wanna talk about a few little things that can be got you's when you're, when, if you decide to take me up on this and you start to put some fun back into your life. Um, so listen up, listen up. All right, so. The first thing I want to say is, is be aware of your skepticism. Sometimes the simpler things are, it's the, it makes them harder to do because you can't believe it can be that, that simple. We love to confuse ourselves and muddle, muddy the water. And what have I been saying the, uh, over the last week? A confused mind is, uh, immobilized. You can't move. You can't do when you make things too complicated, too convoluted, and you muddy the water, okay? Uh, 
The next one is attack boredom. If nothing else, you need to treat boredom for the enemy that it is. Seek it out, root it out, and get rid of it. Because as I said in another podcast, previous podcast, boredom is so insidious that now it is masquerading as depression. And when you have people that have not dealt with their boredom, it can compound to the point where you don't feel like it's worth doing anything. Everything is blah, you know, and it's because you have let boredom compact and constipate you in your emotions and it's winning. So you have got to root out boredom. Boredom will eat you from the inside out and you won't even know what it did before it's too late. And then, of course, I've talked about confusion. Don't remain confused about you, your life, and what you can do. One of the biggest things I have found is when I'm confused, I just go. If I don't know what I want to eat that day, but I know I don't want to eat the stuff I normally do, I just go. I go off the beating path and I start to look for places on the side, you know, of of the little highways that I can drive through. And um, I look and see if a lot of cars are there or if I can smell the aroma of the food in the air. And I just go because confusion is kind of like a boa constrictor. The more you, you snuggle up into it, the tighter it gets around you to the point where you cannot move. So definitely do that. And understand that. Don't let confusion get a hold of you because if you do, you will not venture out of the known places that you go because of desperation, of confusion just just overwhelming you. Y'all, I I don't know about you, but this is some good stuff and this stuff works. And then this is the next thing. Wake yourself up. Wake yourself up. When you're doing this process, make sure that you do things that capture your own attention. Yes. Make, and, and the way you do this is you make a bold proclamation. You make, make a bold promise and you build it up. There are some times when I, you know, I say, okay, this weekend is, and I'll give it a uh, project X, Y, Z. And I'll remind myself of it every day to get myself excited to capture my own attention. And I will get excited, start doing something where I show myself that I'm taking it seriously. And then this is the last one. I do my future casting where I place myself in my imagined perfect state of what my new process is going to reveal to me. I imagine myself being somewhere that's fun, that's challenging, where I meet people I never would have met before, and I do little fun things. And then the last thing is, is if you have obstacles, hindrances, uh, things that would keep you from, from doing, like money or a babysitter or whatever like that, What I want you to do is I want you to write them all down. And I just want you to write this this simple little statement. Who do I need to be to have what I'm proposing to have? Please help me. You don't have to address it to any specific thing if you want to call out to your deity or whatever. But if you just ask that question of who do I need to be to have this, what I want to have? And then you ask, please help me to have it. I'm telling you, it may, at the beginning, it may not happen when you wanted it to, but you'll look around and you'll find yourself doing the things that you wrote down and the blessings will be so smooth that you have to actually stop to remember that you got what you what you petitioned, that you became the person who is able to do what it is you needed to do. So. Yes, let me go through this really quickly as my time is fast ticking down. To make your life fun again, the first thing I want you to do is I want you to reexamine your your reality and I want you to infuse it uh, with vibrancy by making certain things simple, getting out of the confusion 
and allowing magic to happen. And the way you can do this is by going off the beaten path and starting to trust yourself. And then there are five components I want you to to use to actually work on the process of how you're going to make yourself, your life fun again. And that is you're going to reframe things, position yourself in places where you get stories, rename stuff so that you can infuse new life into old things. Have a sense of urgency. If you find yourself saying, I need to, I have to, I should, those are the things that I want you to attach, attack with a sense of urgency. And then of course, some simplify. And then be on the lookout for skepticism, boredom, and confusion. And wake yourself up to capture your own attention to do something cool. So guess what? My time is up. Yes, I do want to thank you for yours. I'll see you tomorrow. And that's going to do it for today's podcast of Wisdom Smack with Michelle Spiva. If you like this podcast, please help us get the word out. Like, comment, subscribe, and even share. And if you really like it, please help us continue to get the word out by considering using this show's link for Amazon. So when you want to go to Amazon and you do all of your general shopping, Uh, please use michellespiva.com forward slash AMZ. It's simple as that. It doesn't cost you anything extra. And this show might receive a little bit of commission that will go towards helping to further get these episodes out to you and to others. So thank you so much for listening. This has been Michelle Spiva with Wisdom Smack. Bye.